This is Mr. Robot, your friendly AI like, the slightly less friendly AI Volga, and this is Jenny Panic, a charming pixel art metroidvania platformer centered around some shady experiments. Today I want to show you what Jenny Panic is all about, so you can impress your friends with your knowledge of lesser known games. I'm Mardux, and let's start. You take control of a robot named, uh, well, robot, together with AI like, who will be your comrade to the journey. You're sent to the Sibiris station on a planet called Black Monday. As you arrive, something seems off. Everything is in a state of despair. After a few introductionary tasks to learn the game's mechanic, you'll board and train and travel to the research center where the real troubles begin. The research facility is overrun by zombies and various creatures. Your former co-workers now turn against you. They are not too fond of you anymore, so while you will have to exterminate them try not to take it personally just do your job don't make eye contact oh hi marco 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 you still owe me 100 dollars you cheeky bastard anyway as you explore the map you will find various notes some humorous others tied to the core story it turns out the scientists were conducting experiments on animals, referred to as a GMO experiments, which give these creatures various powers. Now it's your job to capture them. Additionally, scientists discovered a mysterious black liquid, a life form that eventually became uncontrollable, leading to the current chaos. Initially, I got some Dead Space vibes, even though the developers mentioned their inspiration for the game elsewhere. But still, you are venturing into an infested research center, teeming with monsters and zombies, where contact with the workers has been lost and some questionable experiments have taken place. Sounds familiar? Gene Panic is a mix of a Metroidvania and platformer genres. Metroidvanias often involve backtracking and acquiring special skills and powers that allows you to access previously unreachable areas, but also they are quite demanding titles. Platformers, on the other hand, usually take a more linear and straightforward approach. Gene Panic blends both. While the maps have a Metroidvania structure, the overall game is more straightforward in its story and I never had much trouble figuring out where I need to go. In some Metroidvania games you might spend hours backtracking and searching for next objective, but Jenny Panic is more player friendly in this aspect. Is that a good thing? Well, it depends on the player. The game recommends using a controller as it's designed for controllers and plays well on the Steam Deck. The game isn't resource intensive, so it runs smoothly even on less powerful devices. You can perform basic actions like jumping, walking and interacting with various objects. Oh, and you can dance! Well, crouch. As you progress through the map, you will need to find chests containing tools that are essential for accessing locked or hard to reach areas. These tools function similar to powers in Metroidvania games, such as double jump or a gravity gun that lets you move heavy crates. You will also encounter bosses, but they are relatively easy and feel more like an obstacle than a real challenge. The entire game map is divided into sectors, each with its own theme, like a fire sector and an ice sector or jungle sector. These sectors were once a part of research center, warehouse, living areas, etc., but have since been overrun by GMO experiments and black liquid. The maps are filled with traps, enemies and breakable walls, often structured like puzzles where you need to figure out how to get from one place to another. As you progress, the challenges become more complex, requiring more planning or trial and errors. Still, they are not overly difficult and there were only a few places where I died multiple times before completing the stage. Speaking of dying, in Gene Panic, when you fail, you respawn at the last save point. In some areas, save points are plentiful, but in others they are scarce, making these sections a bit more challenging, though nothing too difficult for experienced players. Before we continue, if you are interested in more videos about upcoming or less known indie titles, please subscribe for more and join me in enjoying indie games. Let's continue the video. This might be a bit philosophical, but I wonder who this game is really made for. Jenny Panning features a lovely and colorful pixel art with some modern particle effects and lightning in a Metroidvania platformer hybrid. This game isn't particularly challenging, but it's not exactly a cozy either. Aside from three small locations, you are not forced to play quickly, so it can be a relaxing experience. However, more advanced platformers players might find the game too easy. As I mentioned earlier, the game is divided into sectors, each with a different theme. Jenny Panic borrows many elements from Metroidvania games in its own way. You will find many areas locked behind the need for a specific tool to unblock the path or solve a puzzle to progress further. Currently, there are 9 types of tool in the game. This isn't a spoiler since once you pick up a tool or GMO item, your task list will update with the number of remaining items to collect. Each tool provides you with a different ability, I don't need to explain what a freeze gun or a flamethrower does, it's pretty self-explanatory. 
Both the GMO experiments and the black liquid are separate entities. Each sector is dominated by a specific type of GMO, while the black liquid turns scientists and workers into a zombies or other monsters. The game doesn't tell you this directly, but the environment where zombification occurs influences the enemies you encounter. That's why in the ice sector you will face ice zombies. Ice, ice, baby. I appreciate how the GMO experiments and the black liquid are distinct yet interconnected. It's not groundbreaking storytelling, but it's a neat idea. Pixel art is a great style because it relies heavily on the developer's skill and experience. I love how vibrant the art style is, and it was enjoyable to look at during my playthrough. It's clear that someone experiences handled the visuals. Nearly everything in the game except the background is animated or alive in some way. Even in the background you will find moving arrows that help you guide you. They are subtle enough that you don't have to rely on them, but they are there if you need them. The ambient music is delicate, which is exactly what background music should be. It's there, but it doesn't cause any distractions. The sound effects, on the other hand, are well done at adding depth to the gameplay. Whether you are dying, jumping or swimming, the sound effect enhance the experience, giving you a sense of a quality that I personally enjoy. I was happy to find very few errors during my playthrough. I can only recall two or three minor issues, but nothing game-breaking or requiring a reset. The game is light in weight and I think it's well optimized. In summary, Geno Panic is a colorful Metroidvania platformer that strikes a balance between being a true Metroidvania and traditional platformer. Some aspects, like the bosses, are a bit unbalanced, they are quite easy, but I enjoyed how the maps were designed like a puzzle, requiring you to find the best or most optimal path to reach the end. There are a few elements that can affect your ending, but overall Geno Panic is a very linear game. It doesn't demand 10 or 20 hours of gameplay, rather it takes about 6 hours at the most if you try to do everything and achieve as much as possible in one go. It delivers fun for this few hours and I genuinely enjoy playing it. The game is very responsive and I didn't have any errors of game breaking problems. It's well optimized, which is why it's also verified on Steam Deck. And I agree that Genio Panic is a great title for Steam Deck. Not too long and perfect for a trip. If you are looking for a lighter metroidvania or challenging platformer, Geno Panic could be the game for you. You can find a link to the Steam page in the description. And as for me, if you had fun and learned about another cool indie game, don't forget to subscribe for more.